So I've done that's how I did it when we did our house. And we're oh, here. Hold up, hold up, hold up. It says I'm live. We have a video you're live, white bread. Where we're going to I don't know if I'm live. Can you guys hear check, check, check. <clears throat> Nobody's watching. You make it public? Huh? You make it public? Yeah, yeah. Compare Let's check uh the mic looks low. Like I'm looking down there. Hi guys, we're we're just actually goofing off here. Um, I'm wondering how to go live. I'm wondering how to go live just uh, without using other programs that we normally use. We're all, uh, hey, gosh, look at everyone jumping on there. See, you don't have that, man. Do you know everybody? how to do this? See, I didn't do any of that. Check this out. Go to a uh, go to live control room. That's where I was. Okay. Oh, uh, internet's slowing down. Huh? Um, no, 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 no. That's not what I used. Uh, go, just go to webcam. There you go. That's uh, what I did. There you go. Now put a title. Uh, <clears throat> hey, uh, tell me what this sounds like because um, uh, I don't have. I'm not using a mic. I am just. I am just uh, using the laptop here. I normally have a setup. We're in a hotel room right now, and we're here. Oh, everyone's saying it sounds good. Okay, well that's cool. Um, so uh, <laughs> this is kind of a dumb. This is kind of a dumb situation. Here's a matter of fact. Here, <clears throat> let me take everyone around. <clears throat> we actually got this uh, hotel room as a little portable studio, as we often do. Hey, Karm says my mind's telling me no, but Muhammad's telling me yes. Hey guys, look who it is. Oh well, we can do some weird stuff with this. Oh yeah, do it. Whoa! They, but they can't, no! They can't hold see on, you hold on. mind. Huh? Hold on, bro. What is this? Oh, do it, do it, do it. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, look at that. Hold on, let me get my phone out, too. Hang on, what? Hang on, can we? Hang on, put put that, hang on, put that, put that this way. With, like oh, oh look at that. Wait, does this count We got all something? three webcams. <laughs> we got all. Wait, can you get this one in here? <laughs> oh, that is wicked, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we got it. Do we have the triangle here? I think something's <laughs> about to happen. What? If we line it up or something, it's like crossing the. I don't know. It's freaking me out, man. Something's buses. gonna blow up. Uh, so anyway, we got a. Uh, <laughs> we got this hotel room as a little portable, well, a little studio here in uh, Denver. We're recording. We're recording some videos. We have. Uh, the problem is vocab's uh, Muhammad costume. Um, he's uh, he flew in earlier and uh, his bag was late because he got to the airport late and still hasn't gotten here yet. So, we're supposed to be recording vocab Malone. And uh, the we actually have two projects I mentioned this earlier in a live stream where um, um, it's got to be noisy with three guys live streaming. We all we all decided to go live stream to see who would be the coolest and whose people love them the most. It's really great, and we're talking a lot, so it's kind of crazy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so anyways, um, they flew in at like 6 this morning, man. <laughs> oh, hey! <laughs> okay, oh, this this is an interesting little problem here, because um, uh, Vocab is, he's got a fake beard to put on to be Muhammad, but <clears throat> I see a little problem here, Vocab, and that's this. Uh, looks like uh, one of your eyebrows call, crawled down to your mouth. For a drink or something like that. So yeah, we gotta. Uh, that thing's gotta come off. Uh, it was funny because Vocab's like, "Can you guys teach me to shave?" It's pretty. And then John said, "Well, I've never shaved before." Yeah. This is a true story. <laughs> Hold on. Where's everybody at right now? Where you're at, or what time zone are you in, or what's Yo, the time zone? Right? All right. Let's see. Uh, I've never. I've never. Uh, I don't recall going live the way I went live here, which was just by clicking on uh, the webcam, and. It said, okay, so I can't even scroll through these comments. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I can do with comments here. What? A guy just comes on my channel and says, there's more people viewing this from David's channel. More people than on Wish channel? Oh, yeah? How many is on Wish channel right now? That's a shocker. What? Really? I got 194 right now. You have 194? I cannot figure out how to use any controls as far as scrolling through these. Oh no! Now I now I can scroll through these comments. Um, 
Oh, you're it says hey tuning in from NC, New Zealand. 5 p.m. Uh Dash Czar says, Hey David, I support Brenton Tarrant. Then Dash Czar, you're a moron and I'm permanently blocking you from my channel for saying something stupid like that. I got just killed 50 people to start a race war. And you come on my channel and say, I support it. You're an idiot. Shut your shut your pie hole, man. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> okay, okay. So anyway, the, the the again the situation was uh the situation was so <laughs> anyway, we're here to record some videos, but um, we need vocab's costume. The the skits we're recording, the skits we're here to record are one, an R. Kelly and Muhammad video. So we have a uh, uh, some of you, I'm sure, have. Has anyone here? Go ahead and tell me in the comment section. Uh, have any? Has anyone seen the R. Kelly interview? There was an R. Kelly interview, and uh, <laughs> Sarah says you almost said the F word. No, I say freaking all the time. I stopped. I stopped even saying that. Uh, no, you'll never hear me say uh, the F word. <clears throat> None of these guys has ever heard me say the F word, even when I'm in rage. A guy, a guy comes on my channel and says, maybe I should go to David's because I'm a moderator over on his. So if you see Alan Rule, block him. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Rule will be bl will be banned. All right, so, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Caroline pointed out they spoofed it on SNL. Yeah, that was uh, that was good. But we actually have a we wrote out a skit. Well, vocab did most of the writing on the skit, but it's uh, we're going to interview R. Kelly at first, and then after interviewing R. Kelly, well, we're going to interview Muhammad to uh, to set him on the right course, but then everyone's going to find out, uh-oh, Muhammad did a lot of weird, creepy things, and uh, even creepier than R. Kelly, and then Muhammad's going to end up giving R. Kelly some advice on how to be a successful sexual predator, and uh, then they're going to start singing some songs together. So they'll start off as R. Kelly songs and then work their way into work their way into uh, some Muhammad version. So you know R. Kelly song, I don't see nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. So that'll start off like I don't see nothing wrong with a little bump and grind, and then Muhammad will jump in. I don't see nothing wrong if that girl's only nine, right? And so anyway, we'll have some little. Uh, some little du duets. That's uh, one of the skits we have going. Um, the other was I actually interview Muhammad as myself. And this is, I uh, wanted to do this because it's a timely, I got AJ nothing but a number, yeah. Um, yep, that, uh, in fact, that might be one of the songs we could have, uh, Muhammad and, wow, Muhammad and R. Kelly could, uh, could be rocking that one. So anyway, um, one of the topics that uh, that's been important. I was actually going to uh, going to lay off talking about Muhammad at least for for a little while because the recent terrorist attack just didn't seem like a good idea to be, um, you know, joking. Right? There's, there are there are times when you want to be when you want to be serious, and uh, but here's the situation: uh, Muslims have been sending me such nasty, nasty comments, telling me I must be thrilled about all the Muslims who were killed, and this that must have been the best day of my life. Um, I spent most of my time railing against violence, and then uh, tons of Muslims send me messages replying um, that I must love it. And guys, I don't know how Muslims have not gotten this. Um, when you send me really, really nasty messages, my natural inclination is not to go, not to come back at you, right? My natural inclination is not to attack back at you. My natural inclination is to go after the prophet who encourages you to be like this. So when you exhibit um, especially nasty behavior, namely uh, using 50 dead people to run around attacking people who condemn the violence and are doing everything they can to stop that kind of violence, um, my inclination is to go after the prophet who did this. So uh, another one of the little videos we're recording, I'll be interview. I'm going to interview Muhammad as myself, and I'm going to ask, be asking Muhammad 
Who's responsible for terrorist attacks, right? And I'll be asking Muhammad about people who commit terrorist attacks in his name because he commanded them to do it. Or is he responsible when people do exactly what he says? And of course, in good Islamic fashion, he's going to say no. People who kill and slaughter in his name simply because he commanded them to do it. Those people have no connection to him and only bigots and racists would ever, would ever think that this has anything to do with uh, with Muhammad. And then we'll ask him, uh, you know, if, if someone like Anders Breivik, who is uh, a, an Odinist and a neo-Nazi, uh, goes and kills a bunch of teenagers at a camp, um, are peaceful critics of Islam responsible for that? And of course, uh, the answer from Muhammad himself will be absolutely. So we'll go back and forth like that, and uh, it'll be another, uh, yet another opportunity to highlight to highlight uh, the inconsistency in Islam and in the media and so on, because everyone operates by the, the same principles here. Um, if if there is an Islamic terrorist attack, so if jihadis go out and kill and slaughter. Oh, people are pointing out we have a ton of background noise. We know because uh, we're just goofing off and vocab said he was going to go live. And then John said, hey, we should just all go live. And so we all clicked on going live on, uh, on our computers right around a couple minutes after 10. So that's the reason there's all this background noise. We're not planning on being here long. Um, we're waiting on vocab suitcase, which has his... Uh, which uh, we're all ready to record here, but we're waiting on Bokev's suitcase, which has his Muhammad costume. So we just thought it would be funny. Um, they they were running their mouths like they could get more people on their live streams than I could, and I thought that that's just that that's just idiotic nonsense. So just uh, anyway, thought this would be a good time to. Uh, oh my goodness, long live Tarrant! You guys are some sick sick people, and hide user on this channel. So bye. Uh, wow. Every time I look over the comment section, I see some moron posting a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> Black Angel says, could you turn off the TV or radio in the background? Okay, let me explain this again because apparently some people are just are just tuning in right now and didn't catch the beginning. Um, that's your background noise. What up? That's your background noise. What up? Who's that? What up? Who's that? What up? What up? Who are you? Who am I? Yeah. What do you mean? What's your channel? My channel? What yeah. Do you mean? <laughs> All right. That's John McRae, everyone. His uh, YouTube channel is uh, What Do You Mean? Uh, anyways. And John's a cool guy because um, he comes up with really crazy ideas. Are you in here shaving? Oh, why didn't you tell me? I could have got this. I told you. What? Oh, get that nasty, germ infested, disgusting thing off your face. All right. What's it about sexual packaging? We might have to. Uh, might have to stay and watch this real quick. Yeah, yeah, they want to see you too. Anyone want to see Vocab get rid of that disgusting thing on his lip? He needs to because I'm uh, not supposed to have mustaches in Islam. Uh, Muhammad laid down very, very uh, strict rules about um, uh, taking care of uh, your armpits and uh, uh, pubic hair, pretty much everything. Um, that's how Muhammad ruled. Muhammad, was, Muhammad seemed obsessive, compulsive, and... Uh, Anyway, I have a video called Muhammad was a metrosexual, if you ever want to look at it. And, and uh, you know, not, not just for critical purposes, but if you want to see what his rules were as far as uh, um, all the things that you had to trim and pluck and so on. It's uh, really, really weird. Really very, very creepy stuff in, uh, in the Muslim sources. But, um, hey, it's actually quieter in here. Oh, because oh, you're just shaving. Are, are people seriously just sitting here watching you shave? Yeah, but not as many as you should. It's only down wow. to 30. It was 40. Uh, yeah. it was if higher. I were on your channel and it was just, oh, let's watch vocab shave, um, I'm just in here in case you cut yourself, and then I can uh, I can get it on film. Oh, look at this. Uh, okay. Okay, this is disgusting. Wait, don't leave. You need to teach me how to shave. It's like. Oh, you should. Like he's got to he's got to shave uh, for that, and then uh, you got to get get uh, any stubble off Wait, because because the, the beard needs to to stick to his face. Can you tell them about what we're doing? Oh well, I was already explaining it over here. I'll give a short version for uh for Vocab's channel, but um, so we're here re recording some skits. Um, one is a. Uh, those of you who already heard this, it's a, this will be, I'll, I'll use a short version. Uh, one is an R. Kelly and uh, Muhammad interview. So we'll have R. Kelly on there. Uh, John as R. Kelly. And then 
um, when everyone's creeped out by all the things that R. Kelly has done uh, with young girls, then we'll bring on Muhammad and see uh, see how Muhammad stacks up against R. Kelly. Hold and on, do I need to change my sideburns? There will be some singing. No, those are fine. I mean, they're not fine. They're pretty ugly, but I mean, think you can better. Maybe I should Does the beard go all the way up there? Yeah. Okay, take them on. Okay. I want to know. Oh, you're not using. Oh, you do the it's, it's almost all gone. Go ahead. Sorry. Um. So we have that. Uh, and uh, I have another another video where uh, I'm going to be interviewing Muhammad about what qualifies about what uh, about oh, oh there, I think there's, there's our costume there's the costume Good hold man. on I'll man I'll man your I'll man your camera right now so um, I, I'm shocked that for three live streams that's pretty awesome all right guys just so you know okay we got the back we got the costume all right so. Uh, that's what's going on right there. So I'm talking to two, two cameras simultaneously, but we just got news. See, here's the thing. We've been waiting all day for vocabs for vo Go get it. What are you doing? I'm I got to finish shaving. Just run down and get it and then finish shaving. I'm going to take the computer down right. there when I go. <laughs> wow. This is, uh, they're awesome. going to come with me to the front desk. Oh, so uh, anyway, that's why we went live because we were, we were waiting to, uh, we were waiting to record a video, and then uh, we just kept waiting and waiting for for Vocab's uh, uh, luggage to get here. So he has his Muhammad costume, so we we could record those skits. So one, I'm going to be interviewing uh, Muhammad on uh, who's responsible for terrorist attacks, because what we find is that um, if Muslims are ever attacked in a terrorist attack, then anyone who's ever said anything negative or critical about Islam ever is responsible. But if jihadis go out and uh, slaughter unbelievers in the name of Allah, it has nothing to do with Islam or with any other person ever in history, and especially not with Muhammad. Total inconsistency. So we, we just, I mean, that's like a quarter of my videos are pointing out inconsistency. So that, and then we have, uh, we have John's part. We have John's part in our... Uh, our uh, Jihadi Klansman. Jihadi Klansman video where the Ku Klux Klan um, converts to Islam because they find out that it's a white prophet with black slaves who hates Jews. And so we, uh, we, we, we want to get that out. But these, uh, these are going to be pretty cool. And uh, we were supposed to be recording earlier. You know what? You know what? I was, I was about to go on here and say, hey, Muslims, you can pray really hard. And maybe Vocab's bag won't even get here tomorrow. Oh this, gosh, entire, this entire bro. weekend will be destroyed. Doesn't look like it happened. We got the costumes. They're coming. And you Muslims who are watching, just know, just know, we do it, we do it out of love. When we demand consistency, when we demand consistency, uh, we do it because we want you to be consistent. Because once you uh, understand that you need to be consistent, then, uh, then you have a much better chance of getting to the truth of really anything. Consistency is pretty much the foundation of rational uh, thought, rational discourse, and it's just not emphasized in Islam. There are double standards for everything. If someone per, you know, if someone in the history of Islam prevented Muslims early on from uh, visiting the Kaaba, uh, Muslims, said, Muslims complained and said, this is persecution, you see these people are evil. What did uh, Muhammad and his followers do as soon as they took over the Kaaba? No one else is allowed to go to the Kaaba. They did exactly what they condemned the unbelievers for. So th these are just the double standards we, we find in Islam. And uh, so we have to encourage consistency. We hope uh, we hope you learn. Uh, at the same time, there are all sorts of really, really silly things um, in Islam. And what we find, say to all my Muslim friends, and I'll go ahead and say this and I'll take some questions, but then we are going to, uh, uh, then we're going to, uh, we're probably going to get back to work because Vocab's going to have his stuff. But, um, uh, yeah, so there, there are all kinds of things in your sources that, that you just don't know. And there are really, some really, really bad things in there. And your leaders, your leaders keep them hidden from you. They don't tell you about these things. And we know this because when we bring them up, Muslims become enraged. How, oh, how dare you say that about our prophet? I didn't say it about your prophet. Your prophet's companion said it about your prophet. So uh, we need to bring these things because when you don't know, when you don't have accurate information, um, this doesn't allow you to make a rational, informed decision. Think about it. When Muslims are told, and I'm, I'm talking to uh, um, to the uh, to you non-Muslims here as well. When 
Muslims go to the mosque um, or wherever they go, and they hear all their lives. Uh, Islam is wonderful. The Quran has been miraculously preserved right down to the letter. The Quran is filled with miraculous scientific insights. Muhammad was the greatest man in history. Anyone who examines the Muslim sources can see that Muhammad was the greatest moral example of all time. When you're told these things all your life, the obvious decision that you would make as a Muslim is to remain a Muslim because all the information you have tells you that Islam is wonderful and that you hear the same thing from Hollywood, you hear the same thing from politicians, you hear the same thing from the media. And guess what? Everything I just said about Islam is complete, utter, total nonsense. You could spend 10 minutes of your life doing some serious research into the things I just said, and you will see that it's complete nonsense. But very few Muslims ever actually do this. Um, so what that means is many Muslims, the vast majority of Muslims are in a state of ignorance, and they're not able to make a rational decision about what to believe. So we believe that... Uh, Guess what? M Muslims aren't going to hear the facts about Can Islam. Take out this camera and use this other one real quick. Yeah, great. No one cares. Well, they care. Oh, they care. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. All right, good. So that's it's quite a town. Um, Hold on, I don't have guys. You're gonna go downstairs to the lobby. I'm not going downstairs. Hey, don't be uh, putting a bunch of people who don't want to be on camera on I'm camera. Vocab is a total psychopath. He doesn't care about anyone. He'll just go down there. Anyway. I think it's quieter in here. All right. So, what was I talking about? Oh, so, yeah, you uh, Muslims out there. So, um, when you're told lies all your life, you're, you're just not in a position to make any sort of uh, rational, informed decision about what you believe. And there are lots of people in this world who want to keep you in that state. They want to keep you in a state where you can't come to any other decision than Islam. So, they want to keep keep you from uh, ever hearing actual facts about Muhammad, actual facts about the Quran, actual facts about Jihad. They don't want you to know these things. And uh, we don't like to see you in that state. We don't like to see you in a state of ignorance. We don't like to see you um, coming to false conclusions because you've never, you don't have the, the relevant information on which to base your decisions. So uh, we believe in getting the information to you. And uh, we're willing to... Um, to use the resources at our disposal, which, uh, you know, videos, um, things like that, skits, uh, to get that information across to you. Oddly enough, oddly enough, we endanger our lives on a daily basis, right? We, we understand, we understand that when vocab puts on that Muhammad costume, that his life is in danger. But hey, it's a risk I'm willing to take uh, for you Muslims out there. And so, uh, Guys, just think about this. We're putting our lives on the line on a daily basis because that's how much we want you. That's how much we want you to have uh, the facts about Muhammad and uh, also also the facts about Jesus, about the Bible, and so on, so that you will be in a, in a position to examine the evidence, examine the evidence about the world, examine uh, the evidence from history, and actually come to an informed decision. A decision based on knowing what the evidence actually is. And because we do this, we are called bigots and hate mongers and racists and Islamophobes because we are willing to lay down our lives for Muslims. And this is the world we live in, and this is why we get really ticked off sometimes um, when uh, people are using things like terrorist attacks to try to silence those who are actually trying to help Muslims and help stop, uh, stop violence. So that's the uh, situation there. All right. Um, so anyway, that's what, just what I wanted to say. Vocab went to get his uh, suitcase, so we'll probably uh, start setting up here to uh, record some skits here in a few minutes. Um, take a couple uh, couple of comments here. Um, oh, just a bunch of... Uh, all right. Uh, Nahat said, David Wood, please help me. All right, Nahat, um, I haven't seen most of the other comments here, but I just saw that, so tell me, um, how can I help you? So I'm just going to pause there uh, until I hear from Nahat. Nubahar Akhtar said, Jesus said, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, and I will say, I don't know you. Aha, Jesus will deny Christians who call him God. Uh, hey, Nubahar, um, why are you here misrepresenting what Jesus said? Why are you here misrepresenting what Jesus said? 
Jesus said that on the on the judgment, many will say to him, Lord, Lord, did we not do all these things for you? And he will say, depart from me. Um, I never knew you. You have to do the will of his father who is in heaven. And he explains what the will of his father is. And so what is the point of that passage? You can't just say, hey, Jesus is Lord and be a horrible person in every way and deny him in every other way. You can't do that. You can't do that. That's the point of the passage. Um, how are you representing what he said? Ah, anyone who believes Jesus is God. Um, that's Jesus is saying, look, you, you're, you either don't know how to read words off a page, in which case you should take a reading comprehension class. Uh, or you're deliberately deceived. So you're either ignorant or you're deceptive. Which one is it? Because no one who actually reads what Jesus said there would think, oh, he's denying his deity. Uh, why? Well, because he, does, he doesn't deny his deity there. Jesus calls Lord, so he can't be denying that he's Lord in a passage if he confirms that he is Lord. Jesus says that he's the final judge. Jesus says that whatever the Father does, he does. He says that everything that the Father owns is his, these are not the sort of claims that a mere human being would ever make. He says we have to honor him the same way we honor the Father. And if we don't honor him in the same way we honor the Father, we don't honor the Father. So um, do you honor Jesus the same way you honor God? Of course you don't. And you're quoting Jesus here to make your points? Very, very strange. Um Wait, where did that comment? I was looking for a comment from some specific person who asked for help. Um, Nahat Gurma said, I have a problem of pornography, insecurity, and depression. Um, well, Nahat, I am not the sort of person who's going to help people out with things like uh, depression or... Uh, addictions. Um, there are there are Christians who are much better than that. There are Christian counselors who are much better at uh, uh, helping people. I'm, I'm pretty good at attacking. Um, I'm pretty good at you know attacking various positions and stuff like that. But um, as most of the people here know, I am a diagnosed psychopath. I don't feel sympathy for people, and that makes me not very good at at uh, helping people. Uh, who are in need, um, but there are, you know, I, I don't know where you are. I don't know where you are, but uh, I would suggest getting uh, in, in in touch with your local churches. And if, if you go to one church and they don't they don't have uh, you know counselors or anything who can who can help you with that, um, to uh, you know keep going to uh, go to different churches until you find some, uh, or look it up online. Look up uh, help with uh, porn addiction, uh, help with depression, um, guys. Uh, you know, keep in mind, depression doesn't mean you you know you just feel a little bit down or something like that. Depression can actually be some some serious stuff. I saw um, I saw Jordan Peterson describe what real like clinical medical depression is, and he said, uh, "Imagine your entire family died yesterday, and you know how how you would feel today, and that's how you just feel every day. It feels like that every day." And so uh, medical depression is uh, is a rougher situation. But uh, again, Nahat, I am not the person to uh, to do that. So, um, yeah, uh, look around online for help in your area. And uh, and if you if you get a chance, go through that and, and let us know how, how that goes. Um, <clears throat> um, Collins, Colin Walker says you should make a book detailing how to evangelize specifically to Muslims since you are a learned scholar in Islam, just saying, I wouldn't call myself a learned scholar. Um, I, I, I'm, I've studied more philosophy than, uh, than, than anything else, but I um, uh, learned a lot about Islam, and we actually recorded a video. I haven't posted yet. I haven't edited it yet, but it's called um, How to Share the Gospel with a Muslim. And uh, you might think, oh, you know, you guys blast away. No, when we're going after Islam, right, if we're going after Islam, then we're on the attack. That's that's That's... That's separate from evangelism. It can be related. You can do both. You can be blasting away at Islam and simultaneously sharing the gospel. Uh, but when you're actually sharing the gospel, um, we, uh, you know, there, 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 are, there are helpful ways uh, that we've learned uh, over the years on uh, helping Muslims to understand certain points and uh, interacting with Muslims. Anyway, we, we recorded a we recorded a, a video about that. I still have to uh, edit it, but uh, look for it here in the, the near future, um, titled. Um, I actually can't find the SD card. I got the SD card somewhere. I have. I'm a, I'm 
I'm slightly paranoid about uh, SD cards when I have a bunch of video footage on them. Uh, you're supposed to, once you've made the videos that you want to make, you erase the, the SD cards and then use them over again. But it's always in my mind, well, what if I decide eventually that I need something else from that, you know, from that clip or something? It's never happened. I've never been in a situation where I thought, hey, that video I recorded six years ago, I really, I'm really going to need that footage for blooper reel or something like that. Um, but for some reason, I just keep buying more and more SD cards. So once one gets in that box, then in order to find that footage, I kind of have to go through every SD card and start plugging them in to try and find them. So, um, hey, what's this? Way you read. Hey, Mo Ferris says way you read luck. Way you read luck. Nineteen verse twenty-seven. I assume you mean Luke nineteen, chapter nineteen, verse twenty-seven. And I don't know what you mean. Way you read. Are you criticizing that? Are you are you a person who says that that is promoting violence, uh, or what? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Because if uh, if you're saying that that promotes violence, we're about to have a hilarious time because I'll actually read the passage and we'll see what the passage actually says. And so Michael 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 Elfer has asked the same question. Are you telling people to read Luke 19, 27? That's a horrible argument Muslims and atheists use against Christians. David would refute that many times. And, uh, oh, Mo Farah said yes. All right, guys. Well, again, we, uh, we have to get back to things, but... Um, uh, well, gosh, we have 450 people in the chat room. So let's go ahead and read this passage real quick. I'm going to go up to Luke 19. And we'll go ahead and read the passage, but we'll actually start in context. In context, the passage starts in verse 11 of chapter 19. Now, interesting, Mo didn't say to start there. What happens when we start there? All right, let's read. As they heard these things, he proceeded to tell a parable. Uh-oh. <laughs> Jesus said he's telling a parable. And guess what? This entire passage, including verse 27, is all part of a parable. Uh, if you're not familiar with parables, parables are stories. Parables are stories that someone is telling. Now, if I'm telling a story and a character in the story says, um, as for those enemies of mine, bring them here and slay them before me. Is that me telling people to go, telling my followers to go and kill, or telling my listeners to go and kill? Or is that a character in a story telling them? Well, it's character in a story. So let's go ahead and read. But notice, notice what Muslims do over and over and over again. And atheists too. Sam Harris did this. Sam Harris did this in like his TED talk. Um, said, you see, Jesus can also be bad. And he quoted Luke 19, 27. Told his listeners, Sam Harris, one of the leaders of the, the new atheist movement, uh, told his listeners that Jesus told his followers, as for those enemies of mine who do not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. Uh, well, what happens if we actually read the passage? So as they heard these things, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. He said, therefore, a nobleman went to a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. So a nobleman is going away to receive a kingdom. Calling 10 of his servants, he gave them 10 minas, that's pieces of money, and said to them, engage in business until I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, we do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, having received the kingdom, he ordered these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him that he might know what they had gained by doing business. The first came before him, saying, Lord, your mina has made 10 minas more. And he said to him, well done, good servant, because you have been faithful in very little. You shall have authority over 10 cities. And the second came saying, Lord, your mina has made five minas. And he said to him, and you are to be over five cities. Then another came saying, Lord, here's your mina, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you because you were a severe man. You take what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will condemn you with your own words. You wicked servant, you knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit, reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank? And at my coming, I might have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to the one who has 10 minas. And they said to him, Lord, he has 10 minas. He said, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine who do not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. So who says, 
As for those enemies of mine who do not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. It is a ruler in a parable. But how, oh, how did our Muslim friend represent this? He represented this as Jesus ordering his followers to go out and kill and slaughter people. Why? Well, maybe because of the recent terrorist attack by a uh, white nationalist um, who wanted to slaughter people to start a race war. And our Muslim friend trying to tie this to the teachings of Jesus. Think about this. Muslims claim that they really, really respect Jesus. Oh, we, we, we respect Jesus more than you. And every time you turn around, they're twisting and distorting his words. I mean, think about this. Jesus is telling a story. And the parable is about the end times. Um, the parable is that uh, the people who reject Jesus are eventually going to be judged at the end of time when he returns. Jesus commanded his followers to go around killing people. Why do they want to do that? Well, because Muhammad ordered his followers to go around killing people. And so Muhammad looks, when you compare Muhammad and Jesus, Muhammad looks really bad by comparison. And Muslims want Muhammad to be the greatest man who ever lived. So they, they try to drag Jesus down to Muhammad's level, right? So here's the situation. You compare Jesus and Muhammad, and I can't even accurately uh, show what it's actually like. Because it has to be like, you know, that sort of situation. But, uh, you know, for, for spatial concerns here, you've got Jesus and you've got Muhammad. And the goal of Muslims and Muslim apologists who discuss these issues is to make Muhammad sound more like Jesus and to make Jesus sound more like Muhammad, right? Because they want G they want to make Muhammad sound like he was peaceful and loving and, well, what a great guy. And they want to make Jesus sound like he's a violent killer and so on. And uh, just think about this. Um, that's just amazing. It's just amazing that their, their religion can do this to them. Um, they distort their own prophets, teachings, and example to make him sound better than he actually is. But, but guess what? I mean, if he's the ultimate moral example, why would you need to make him sound better? Um, and they try to make Jesus sound worse than he is. And then they claim to be people of truth. Very, very strange. Very, very uh, interesting religion that does this. <clears throat> All right. I'm um, going to have to get off here in uh, in one second. Glad we got five. We got up to 500 people so I can go tell uh, John and, uh, and Vocab. That our channel got up to 500 with... Uh, Going live without telling anyone. There was no heads up. I just clicked the. I just clicked the uh, the live button. Um, 1504, 1504. Sean says, David, are you Protestant? Um, I've never considered myself anything other than Christian. But if you um, sort of laid out my beliefs, they would uh, they would most comfortably fall within the the, the Protestant tradition. Um, I would be if you tried to label me, it would be kind of non denominational uh, Protestant, something like that. Um, <clears throat> David, it would be great if someone put together a concordance with numbers and verse for the Quran. Maybe one of your friends could do it. Use authorized imams to beat any criticisms. Um, something along those lines is already uh, about to come out. Uh, it's going to be uh, an online, uh, I think it's Quran Gateway. So there's there's Bible Gateway. It's a Bible, it's a Bible website, and then there's Quran. Uh, gateway, but uh, there's going to be plenty, plenty, plenty of, of information on there. Plenty of information that Muslims need to know. Uh, information about uh, textual variants in the Quran. Muslims don't believe they're in. Your average Muslim believes there's never, never been a single textual variant in any manuscript of the Quran. It's total nonsense. Um, but it's going to make information about uh, Islam and the Quran much, uh, much easier to access. Um, <laughs> the Nehutu says, Allah prays to who? Just, just so you know, nay, too. Allah doesn't pray to Muhammad. It's for Muhammad. So that's your Arabic lesson today. I knew I was going to have to do this and come in here and give you a free uh, Arabic lesson. Um, <clears throat> all right, guys. Uh, wait, someone said behind me. What's behind me? I don't know. Yeah, I went in here just because it's uh, people are complaining about the noise out here. All right, let's go ahead and go out here. I'll we'll probably log off. What's on my feet right now? I got some boost. What's up, truce? Oh, hey. Yo, what's up? Vocab's freestyling. So say squad up. Hey, yo, one vocab alone. I can't hear you. I got these headphones on. If you come too near, dude, it might be a reverb. According to the live chat, that's what I heard. That's my word. 
next to this nerd. I'm feeling perturbed. I'm feeling disturbed. Yes, y'all, thank God I'm saved. Jesus the Christ, he helps me shave. And he makes me brave. Vocab Malone don't go to a rave. Yes, y'all, and I eat Lay's potato chips. And now I flip. Oh, he's saying it's too loud. It is too loud. Also, oh, the, the headphones are too loud, guys? Or the beats too loud? Or the vocals are too loud? Are your raps too loud? Too loud. Uh, Maybe they're just saying, uh, your shirt's too loud. Maybe they're saying your breath is too loud. Okay. Are you, are you saying, what are you saying is too loud? You're saying the beat's too loud now? Guys, I need feedback. Man, you really you really let everyone down with that one, Vocab. Well, I haven't finished. I'm going to do it again. I want to make this sure. Oh, look, one request before I go. For one of the scenes, could we have R. Kelly's I Believe I Can Fly with Muhammad ready to jump off the mountaintop after his first revelation, just a thought. Edward said, slap his head, David. Does that fix it? Yeah. Am I poon Johnny? Help. That's funny. Yeah. I'm a Siciliano. Hey, David's here, should I? Um, oh, the vocals are too loud? Vocals are too loud. It sounds really loud. Okay. Okay. Vocab needs lots of attention, so he uh, yells really loud. No, All right, guys. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump off now. We'll have a bunch of cool videos coming out. Uh, I'm, I might try to, depending on how recording goes, might try to get one of those videos out tomorrow. The one I want to... Uh, the one I want to get to first is uh, the interview with Muhammad on how uh, on what what who's responsible for terrorist attacks? Is it the the person who's doing the attack or uh, other people? So we're gonna look at that. That's the most time sensitive because because of the recent terrorist attack. So um, anyway, we'll be getting to those. We we'll get into those and uh, have those out very soon. All right. Uh, God bless everyone. Catch everyone later. And uh, I'll be live streaming uh, this coming week. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Might go live tomorrow. If we get all our recording done, we still have time before our planes leave. Be live streaming again tomorrow. Maybe we'll have some clips or something ready. All right. Catch everyone later. God bless you.